Let's do some nuclear decay example problems. First off, plutonium-239 decays via alpha decay. What are the products of the decay? All right, so in alpha decay, what happens? I start with my plutonium-239, and out pops an alpha particle. An alpha particle is basically the nucleus of a helium-4 atom, right? So I had two protons come out, so that means what I'm left with behind is going to have two fewer protons. And I have also two neutrons for a total of four nucleons leaving, which means my atomic mass number is going to go down by four, so this is going to be 235. And I just need to know what is element 92, and it turns out, I look on a table of the elements and there it is, element 92 is uranium. So my decay products are an alpha particle and the uranium-235 nucleus. All right? And we don't, yeah, that's all there is for alpha decay. Now, plutonium-239 decays via alpha decay. How much energy is released in the decay? So this is the same process, but now I want to know how much energy is released. But as you recall, the energy released is just going to be the change in mass times c squared. All right? And um, I'm going to give you the masses in atomic mass units in terms of u. And it turns out that u is 931.494 MeV over c squared, right? I could have given you one atomic mass unit in kilograms, but instead I'm giving it in u in this format right here, which is kind of nice because if I take one atomic mass unit, right, 931.494 uh, MeV over c squared, if I multiply that by c squared to get the rest energy of something with one atomic mass unit, those go away and it just says, oh, something with one atomic mass unit of energy has 931.494 MeV of rest energy. So if I do all my calculations for the difference in math in atomic mass in atomic mass units, then multiplying by C squared is the same thing as just multiplying by 931.494 MeV, right? Because the C squared will cancel out. So if I do my units, I convert from U to these units to MeV over C squared, and then the C squared cancels out when I multiply by C squared to get energy from mass. So all I need to do now is find the mass of these nuclei and subtract them, right? So I want the, the mass of pl plutonium-239 uh, nucleus. And if you go to, uh, I think it's section 44.5 in your textbook, oh yeah, 44.5, it will tell you what the mass of a plutonium-239 atom is. But we didn't want the mass of a plutonium-39 atom. We wanted the mass of a plutonium-239 nucleus. All right? So an atom has a nucleus plus it's got, what was the atomic number? Uh, 94. So it's our atom has the nucleus, but it's also got 94 electrons. So I'm going to have to subtract off the mass of 94 electrons. So I take the atomic mass, subtract off the mass of the electrons, and that gives me the mass of the nucleus. Now hopefully you're troubled by that and you're saying these electrons are bound to the atom. So the mass of the atom is actually a little bit less than the mass of the nucleus plus the mass of the electrons, which means the mass of the nucleus is going to be a little bit more than the mass of the atom minus the mass of the electrons. All right, But it turns out the nuclear energies involved in nuclear reactions are typically much, much larger than the binding energies that bind electrons to an atom. So we're going to ignore the binding energy of the electrons, and we're going to say, to sufficient uh, accuracy, the mass of our nucleus is just the mass of the atom mi minus the mass of all of the electrons. All right? Another thing, speaking of accuracy, notice if you round these all to integers and do the calculation, you're going to get zero. It's going to add up to zero. Right? We start with 239 nucleons, we end up with 239 nucleons, right? And each nucleon weighs about one atomic mass unit. So this difference in energy, the difference in mass, right? When we have this alpha decay, we end up with more binding energy, all right? Which means the mass is a little bit lower and we've released some energy. But that difference in mass is going to be fairly small. So I have to keep all these digits here so that I can, you know, when I subtract out the stuff that mostly goes away, I'm left with the differences of these little extra bits. Anyway, so let's do this. The mass we start with is the mass of the plutonium nucleus. Then let's subtract out what we end up with. And what we end up with is just uh, a helium-4 nucleus, all right, which is the mass of a helium-4 atom minus the mass of two electrons. Plus, we have a uranium-235 nucleus, which has a mass, which is the mass of a uranium atom minus 
92 electrons, right? Uranium has 92 protons, therefore it's got 92 electrons in a neutral atom. Now notice when you look at this, I've got 94 electrons and I'm subtracting I've got 90, I'm subtracting 94 electrons here, but here are minus minus. I'm adding 2 plus 92. So the electrons on this side of the minus sign cancel with the electrons on that side. And the electron masses don't matter, and I can just go ahead and plug in the atomic masses. All right, so if I go to Python here, I'm going to take the mass of my plutonium, which is 239.052163. I'm going to subtract the mass of a helium atom, which is 4.002603, and then I'm going to subtract the mass of a uranium-235 atom, which is 235.043930 atomic mass units, and that's how much the mass changes, 0 0.00563 atomic mass units, and that's how much the mass changes. I multiply that by C squared, all right, and I will get the energy released, but if I First convert, so I'm going to convert this to MeV over C squared. So if I multiply by 931.494 MeV over C squared, that's the mass in MeV over C squared. Multiply by C squared, and I just have this thing, only there's no more C squared, it's just MeV. All right? So I multiplied by 931.494 to get the, the difference in mass in not atomic mass units, but in units of mega electron volts over C squared. Then I multiply that by C squared, which is basically multiply by one and don't talk about the C squared anymore. So the change in energy, the energy released is 5.24 MeV. All right, that's how much energy is released when we undergo uh, alpha decay from plutonium-239. Okay, so we did alpha decay, now let's do beta minus decay. Carbon-14 decays via beta minus decay. What are the products of the decay? All right, so we start with carbon-14. And beta minus means a beta minus particle is an electron, right? So we kick out an electron. And if I kick out an electron, I also have to kick out an anti-electron neutrino to preserve lepton number, to preserve how electri electri electronic -y the system is, right? Um, and then what I'm left with is I'm left with a nucleus. But if I've kicked out an electron, I've had negative charge come out of the nucleus. That means I must have extra positive charge left behind in the nucleus. So I'm going to go up by one proton. So some, one neutron converted to a proton. I still have the same total number of protons and neutrons, but now one of my neutrons is converted to a proton. I look at my uh, table, uh, periodic table, and I say, well, what is element number seven? That's nitrogen. So my carbon-14 is going to decay to nitrogen-14. All right, so there we go. That's what I get. Those are the decay products when carbon-14 undergoes beta minus decay. All right, now, when carbon-14 decays via beta minus, minus decay, how much energy is released? Once again, the energy released is just the difference in masses times C squared. So how much mass I started with minus how much mass I ended with. All right, well, I started with one carbon-14 nucleus, and I ended up with one nitrogen-14 nucleus plus one electron plus a neutrino, and neutrino's masses are really, really, really tiny. For a long time, we thought they had no mass, all right? So we'll ignore the rest mass of the neutrino. We'll see how much energy is released, right? The neutrino has kinetic energy. That's part of the energy released, all right? Let's find how much energy is released, all right? So I want to take the mass that I started with, which is the mass of a carbon-14 atom, but I have to subtract off the mass of the electrons around it to get just the mass of the nucleus. So that would be six times the mass of an electron because carbon has six electrons. And then I'm going to subtract off, so that's the mass we started with, I'm going to subtract off the mass we ended up with. And we ended up with the mass of a, uh, we had a nitrogen-14 nucleus, so I'm going to take the mass of a nitrogen-14 atom and subtract the mass of seven electrons, because a neutral atom, neutral nitrogen atom has seven electrons around it. But then I've also got this extra electron that was emitted, right? And so that's my difference in mass right there. Well, notice something. I've got six here. Here I've got, ne I've got negative six here. Here I've got negative seven plus one is negative six. So once again, the electrons on this side of the minus sign cancel the electrons on that side, and I'm left with just the masses of the atoms. So if I just take the mass of the carbon-14 atom, which is 14.003242 atomic mass units, and I subtract off the mass of a nitrogen-14 atom, which is 14.003074, atomic mass units, convert that into 
units of MeV over C squared, and then multiply by the C squared, this is the energy that's released. So the energy released then is 0 0.156, 0 0.156 mega electron volts. All right, so that's how much energy is released when a carbon-14 atom undergoes beta minus decay. Okay, we did beta minus, we've done alpha. Let's do beta plus now. Magnesium-23 decays via beta plus decay. What are the products of the decay? So I start with my magnesium-23 atom. Beta plus means I'm emitting a positron, all right? So I get this positive charged anti-electron coming out, all right? If a positron comes out to preserve electronic electroniness, or more technically speaking, to preserve lepton number, I also have to emit an electron neutrino, all right? And then I'm left with a nucleus. I had positive charge come out of the nucleus. That means I have less positive charge left in the nucleus. I must have converted one proton to a neutron. So we're going to have one fewer protons, but one more neutron, so our atomic mass number stays the same. What is element 11? That is over here, sodium. All right, so we're left with a sodium-23 nucleus. All right, so it decays. Here are the decay products when magnesium-23 decays via beta minus decay. All right, magnesium-23 decays via beta plus decay, or positron emission. How much energy is released? Okay, so once again, we're going to take the energy, the mass of, we're going to take the difference in mass that we started with and what we ended up with, multiply by C squared, and that's the energy released. All right, so the difference in mass is the mass we started with, which is the mass of a magnesium 23 nucleus. But um, we, uh, okay, so we had a magnesium 23 nucleus, but the magnesium, we have the mass of an electron. Sorry, we have, the, the table gives us the mass of an atom, so we need to subtract off those 12 electrons in an atom. All right, so we need to subtract off 12 electron masses and that will give us the mass of the magnesium-23 nucleus. That's what we start with. Let's subtract off what we ended up with. We ended up with an electron, so mass of an electron. Well, no, we ended up with a positron. But positrons have the same mass as an electron. Antiparticles have the same mass as their non-antiparticle counterparts. So we have one electron mass in the positron, all right? And then we also have a sodium-23 nucleus, and its mass is going to be the mass of a sodium-23 atom minus 11 electron masses, all right? Okay, and that's our delta M. Okay, so over here we have, we're subtracting off 12 electron masses. Here we're subtracting off 11, but then adding one back in. So we actually need to subtract off 10 here, right? So that electrons don't cancel out when we do positron emission. And what we're gonna be left with is the mass of a magnesium atom minus the mass of a sodium atom minus two electron masses. That's kind of weird, huh? Right before, right, we had something happen, but our atoms had enough electrons to account for that. But here what we're doing is we're saying, look, I'm kicking out a positron. That means that uh, I need one fewer electrons in my atom, so I have this extra electron that was sticking around, plus I've got this extra positron, so I have two electron masses worth of mass that are now not part of my atom, all right? So, it turns out that positron emission doesn't happen as often as other types of beta decay because you have this extra mass to deal with. You have these two, uh, this electron and this positron, two electrons worth of mass left over that makes it such that fewer nuclei can energetically do positron emission. But when it does happen, here, we'll calculate the energy released, all right? So I'm going to take the mass of my magnesium atom, which is 22.994124 atomic mass units, Subtract off the mass of my sodium-23 atom, which is 22.989769 atomic mass units. Then I'm going to subtract off two times the mass of an electron, which is 0 0.0005486 atomic mass units. And that's how much my mass changes by. If I multiply by 931.494, that will give me the energy in MeV. So the energy released is 3.03 MeV. 3.03 MeV. All right, so that's how much energy is released when we do this positron emission, this beta plus decay. And because we have these extra two electron masses, I said beta plus decay doesn't happen in as, isn't in as many different isotopes as beta minus decay would. But when it does happen, I'm left with a proton 
and an, sorry, with a positron and an electron sitting out there not bound to any atom, they can get together and annihilate. And it turns out, if, if I ask you how much energy is released in the beta plus decay, that's how much is released, all right? But then later on, you're going to get twice the mass of an electron. When that positron and electron annihilate each other, they release photons, pure energy. Multiply that by 931.494. So you end up getting an extra MeV of energy as a secondary process. So initially, 3.03 was released, but then we have this extra two electrons worth of energy getting canceled, being annihilated and turned into energy. All right, so more mass loss. But before that can happen, we first have to do the uh, beta plus decay. Okay, so we've done alpha, beta minus, beta plus. What's left to us? Well, we're not going to do gamma because gamma isn't is excited stuff decaying. All right, so we're left with electron capture. So potassium 40 decays by electron capture. What are the products of the decay? So this time we've got potassium 40, but before the decay happens, we have some electron come along. All right, so we start off with this mass right here, the mass of this stuff. And that electron gets captured, it disappears. So now we've, we've gotten rid of some negative charge. We must have canceled it with some positive charge. So now the nucleus we're left with is only going to have 18 protons. We've converted a proton to a neutron, all right? And we started with the electron here, so we don't have an electron spitting out. But we got rid of an electron. We better preserve lepton number by then emitting a neutrino. So all we need to know now is what is element number 18. And element number 18 is over here. It's argon. So argon. So argon 40. So we started with potassium 40. We have captured an electron and turned it into argon 40. All right, so there are the products. Now, how much energy is released when we do this? OK, so uh, we've got the mass we started with. What did we start with? We started with uh, krypton atom, or sorry, potassium atom. And that uh, potassium had 19 electrons. We need to subtract off 19 electrons. All right? And what we were, oh, plus we had the mass of an electron, right? We captured the electron. So that's what we started with, was the potassium nucleus plus an electron. And what we were left with was just our neutrino that has no rest mass and our argon, argon 40. So it's going to be the mass of the argon, but then how many nuclei? Um, remember, our argon was element number 18, so we have 18 electrons. So we have to subtract off 18 electrons. All right, and we look at this. That's our change in mass. If we look at this, here we have nine, negative 19 plus 1, so those cancel with that. And once again, I don't need to worry about the mass of the electrons. I just have the mass of the atoms, and I've got just the mass of the uh, potassium atom minus the mass of the argon atom. And so let's uh, go to our calculator again. And the mass of our potassium atom is 39.9639984. And then we subtract the mass of what we were left with, which was our argon atom, which is 39.962384. So that's how much our mass changes in atomic mass units. Multiply by 931.494, and that will give us the energy in MeV, so 1.5. Five zero, so Q is 1.50 mega electron volts. Did I copy that right? Yeah. All right, there you have it.